Last year, the biggest series that we did was one called How to Build a Responsive Website from Start to Finish. It was a great experience to create in front of all of you. Indeed, with all of you. Through your interactions in the comments and your contributions on GitHub, I learned more than I was taught. I'm certain of it, and I'm not even being modest. The feedback from that series has been overwhelming. Even today, it's the most popular piece of content on this entire channel. So it's a really intimidating thing to try to compete with. Now I wanna do something better, but dang. That series did really well. So let me take a minute to talk about all the things that you guys said that you liked about that series, and we'll see if we can't build upon those same elements. Number one, you really liked that it was truly a start to finish experience. I didn't skip any steps to speed the video along, and you know, as a video creator, that can sometimes be difficult. You know, I want my content to be watchable, and sometimes I worried that you guys wouldn't want to see the boring stuff but it was actually the boring stuff that you guys really, really connected with because a lot of other videos have skipped over those things. We were finally able together to fill all those little cracks in the knowledge that you guys said you didn't even know were missing. Number two, you liked that it was a usable project, meaning that you could download the code and follow along and use it for your own projects for free. And number three, many of you guys said that you liked that we didn't just go through how to code different things, but we talked about why we were making those certain decisions. So keeping all these principles in mind, we're gonna to return to that idea of creating a responsive website from start to finish, but this time with one big plot twist. This time we're doing my own personal website. I'm calling this series, Design and Code My Personal Website in 12 Hours. In that last series, we did a discovery exercise, and I do this for every one of my projects. So let's go through that again. It's important at this stage to avoid getting caught up in thinking about design or features or user experience or even the technology stack. What we really wanna be focusing on in the beginning of the project is making sure that we understand the project. And the way to properly understand the project is to do research and to ask your client questions. You always have a client. Even if you're an in-house designer, your boss is your client or the person who's making the request is the client. Even if you're designing this website for yourself, you have to treat yourself as the client. Now there are two simple questions that you can use to get yourself on the right path every time. The first question is, who is the owner? The second question is very similar. Who is the audience? Now you must respect these questions. If you try to move past these questions without fully answering them, you will build the wrong thing every time. After identifying both the owner and the audience, you really need to follow up those two questions by discovering what is important to each of them. Notice that I'm telling you to discover what is important to the audience. Don't let your client or your project manager dominate the question of what content belongs on the homepage. It's your job to find a good place that satisfies them both. A cliche example of this being unbalanced is a classic university website, right? So what does the university have on their homepage? Big, beautiful pictures of their landscaped campus. But what do the students want? They want a class schedule. The result, the audience gets frustrated and leaves and the university gets less applicants to pay for its enormous landscaping bill. You see, it needs to work for both parties and maybe not always in the way that each party initially assumed that it would. In this project, I get the distinct pleasure of being the owner. I want my website to correctly reflect my business, what I'm doing now, and how I can be of service to those who are looking for what I have to offer. When I look at my website now, as a quick criticism of it, I don't really get a clear picture of what the Travis brand is all about. I don't really understand what Travis does. Now this design is three years old, and at the time I created it, the only thing I did was write and design articles for my blog. Today things are much different. I do different things, more things, and I wanna be able to communicate that to my visitors. Okay, so that's the owner, that's me. But what about the audience and their needs?
My audience has three main types of people. The first one are students. They're often coming into my website from another venue and looking to find a little bit about me and why I do these things and what are the other sources of content I'm producing. The second audience type that I get on my website are a kind of people that I would call promoters. Now these are like conference organizers or brand outreach people, uh, marketers or sponsors for shows. These people are usually interested in how I can benefit their brand. And the third kind of people that visit my site are what I call prospective employers. These are people who may want to hire me for either contract work or full-time employment. Um, as this website kind of serves as a portfolio, it's good to keep those type of people in mind. Now the important things to them, let me just grab this headline, put it down here. The important things to them are going to be that number one, uh, it's easy to discover and how I do my work. And I would say that they should be able to easily sample other types of content I produce. And then third, I would say that they'd probably just want to be able to contact me. Easy, right? Now if I look back at the three audience types that I identified, I can notice that these three needs that I discovered really do work with each one of them. All of them want these kind of same things. Now that we've answered those two questions, those two important questions, we can think of the different content types that are going to meet the needs of those audience members that we identified. Now let's make a quick list of the things that could be on this page that would help them to meet their needs. Now we're finally talking about features. Now notice that we're not sketching and we're not wireframing and we're not designing or coding. All we're doing is making lists and identifying things that need to be explored. So let's jump back to that first persona, the client. What does the client need in terms of features? Right now if we jump back to the website as it is, we see that the features are, we have articles. The articles are the main attraction currently and they have been like the most outward projection of my creative efforts for the past three years, right? There's over 50 articles here and each one has been designed specifically to fit the message of, of that article. So right now they're the first thing in the navigation and the first thing that will, people will see when they come here. But the problem is that in the past two years I really pivoted my efforts and these are not the main thing I do anymore. I've created this YouTube channel, uh, I do mentoring, I do vines, I do a podcast, a newsletter, I still design and, and update my uh, portfolios on Dribbble and Behance, and I, and I actually still do write these articles also, but we could see that they're less and less of the main thing that I do. The next thing that's currently here featured is this notes section. Now, a few weeks ago, I, I made this as kind of a stopgap solution to uh, helping people to get on board with my newsletter efforts. And it's supposed to be just a temporary place for this newsletter until we go through this process. And next is the work section. And while I still love design and I think of myself as a designer above everything else, I'm not necessarily trying to promote my work to the world as a for hire agent. And so this is not necessarily the biggest part of what I want my website to be either. And lastly is the biography currently here. But I'm thinking now that I want my story to be less about the story of my life and more about the story of the things that I can do to help other people, the value that I can bring into their lives. And that's it right now. If you'll kind of excuse this really self-indulgent uh, tour of my website. But what I'm trying to do is explain where I am right now and I can show you how I want to progress things. But as I mentioned a minute ago, I'd like to, as the client, tell the full story of the different services and creative outlets I use to help other people. So the navigation could go something like this. There could be an about. Then uh, I'd want to talk about YouTube. I'd want to talk about the mentoring that I'm doing. Scroll up here. I'd also, I, I still really do love and appreciate these articles. I'd like to showcase the vines that I've been making and 
you know, not forget my design work. I'd like to have a place where people could sign up for my notes, which is the email newsletter that I do. And I'd like to help people find the, the podcast that Los and I create every other week. And finally, of course, the need that's on every website is the contact. But if I, as the client, think that this is good, then that's great, but that's only half of the pie, right? We need to use our empathy and check these features against the other personas that we already identified. I need to honestly ask myself if I think that these things are what my students and promoters and potential employers are looking to discover about me. Looking over this list, I think this would be a fantastic resource for students. Um, maybe they found my videos on YouTube and by doing a little bit of research, they came here and they sign up for the free notes that I do. And that's great. That's exactly what I want. But how about a promoter? I would eventually like to do some public speaking, so it's good that YouTube is prominent. We also have a podcast here, and that's good. I wouldn't say it's perfect pr for promoters. I'm imagining that they would want to have the examples of the things I've done pretty prominently placed on the homepage. Examples of sponsored videos that I've done or speaking engagements. Hmm. You know, I want to put a pin in that because this audience is, is definitely a, a secondary. You know, and potential employers is also secondary because I'm not really looking for a new job right now. In fact, this is not what I should be focusing on. I don't know, maybe I listed those personas as like a knee-jerk reaction of a lifelong posture of thinking that way, you know, like you always want a better job or you always want more clients. See, I'm, I'm glad that we're doing this exercise. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Like this is in real time, like as I'm recording this video, I'm thinking through these things and, and you see how like when you really think through them, sometimes your assumptions can just change. Now I still think that there's value in being able to offer these personas uh, information that is specifically tailored to them. But my main audience, especially in 2015, is you. People who are interested in dev tips and the podcast and all that kind of junk. Maybe if it were pertinent, I could create a secondary URL for these different personas. I've done that in the past and it's worked pretty well. Very well, actually. I'm glad that we went through the mental effort of the discovery process. I'm more confident now than ever that I'm building the right thing for the right person. <laughs> if we had not gone through this, I would have tried to cater to the wrong person. I would have built the wrong thing. In the next video, we're gonna take this content strategy that we just developed now and move it forward by creating wireframes so we can really nail down the experience that we want people to have when they're visiting our website. And remember, keep on dis discovering, just using the questions. Hello, welcome to the end of the show. I just wanna take a second to thank these people here. These are the names of the people who support the show via Patreon. Not only do the people who are in the Patreon community bring you dev tips every week for free, but they also enjoy other perks like dev tips chat, uh, extra videos, and even a, patron, a private Patreon podcast. To learn more about what we're doing over there, there's a link in the description below or just visit patreon.com slash dev tips. I would love to have you join us, but if you're still unsure, Here's something somebody said recently about their membership in the community. Thanks again.